Hello, this is Anna, the pretty shepherd, and today I am here to share with you a fabulous New Year's Eve hairstyle that is exquisite and detailed, but also secretly quick and easy. Hi, this is Editing Anna, jumping in for a little note. I know that 2020 celebrations have been very different for everyone than what they've been like in the past years, uh, but the thing is that I live on a farm and I've spent most all of my New Year's Eves at home taking care of the animals and um, even if I do that, I still like to dress up, I still like to do my hair, I still like to look elegant and that's how I embrace the new year. You should probably be staying home as well, most likely, but just to make it a bit more positive, do let me know in a comment below one fun thing that you are going to do for your own entertainment as you wave goodbye to the dumpster fire of a hot mess garbage of a year that 2020 has been to most of us. Okay, thank you, enjoy the video, bye bye! I realized that by doing the intro in this dress and uh, with the hairstyle and all, I've totally spoiled the end <laughs> reveal of the video, but... <laughs> But I just can't be bothered to change my clothes one more time. <laughs> please act surprised at the end, okay? Pretty please? True story about this hairstyle. I've discovered this type of bun back in my late teens. However, my arrogant and angsty teenage self got upset by the fact that I would get stopped on the street and asked who did my hair, if I went to a hairdresser, if this was some sort of special style, if I had spent hours upon hours to create it myself. And it really bothered me that there were other hairstyles which I actually did spend hours on and people just failed to notice it. So yeah, my arrogant little angsty self decided that I'm not going to wear this style anymore just because I got way too many compliments for it. Yeah, that's that's a teenager's logic for you. But anyway, now that I am closing in on 30, I am ready to embrace all sorts of hairstyles that take very little effort and very little time, yet create an elegant and feminine look, such as this one. And since I've noticed that many of you also enjoyed my simple, quick and easy, yet feminine and elegant updo, I've linked it over here if you haven't seen it already. I figured that this one is probably worth sharing as well. And yes, this is definitely one of those hairstyles that you can try out even if you don't have very good hair braiding skills, even if you don't have a lot of experience, even if you feel that the hair is falling out from your fingers whenever you try to braid. This one is great for novice hair braiders as well, since you will first anchor your hair in a ponytail and only then start braiding. That way you already have a fixed point from where to pull the hair from so it's definitely worth giving a try. We're going to start by brushing our hair. Once we've already brushed our hair we can pull it in a high ponytail. I'm just using a plain old elastic. I usually aim to put the ponytail higher than I want it to be simply because my hair has a tendency to weigh the ponytail down so if I aim a little bit higher then I'll kind of sort of end up where I want it to be. Also another one of my tricks is that whenever I buy shoes or anything that comes tied together with an elastic I will actually tie that elastic up into small hair bands because I found that whenever I pull out a hair elastic from my ponytail it tends to be very hard on my hair creating these knots around the elastic itself so I actually just carefully, very carefully snip the elastic off with a small pair of scissors when I want to undo this hairstyle and this way I don't really feel wasteful because this would have ended up in the trash anyway but at least now it has one more life purpose before it does. Now that we have our ponytail we can start making a vortex bun. For that we will part the hair into three sections and create a rope braid out of each section. To create the rope braid we will part the hair into two more sections, twist the section in one direction and then turn in the other. So twist counterclockwise and turn clockwise. Twist and turn. Twist and turn. This is actually the most time-consuming part of the hairstyle, especially if you have hair as long as mine, or longer. 
Once we've finished our three row braids, we can get on to pinning the bun. I'm going to use U-pins to pin these, but feel free to use bobby pins if that suits you better. To pin a vortex bun, you need to lay down the first braid in half a circle and then pin. Then next to it, lay down the second braid and pin. And the third, also in a half circle and pin. Then you continue with the first braid, half circle and pin second braid and pin, third braid, and so on, and so forth until you run out of braids. Once you run out of hair, you can tuck in the thin ends underneath the braids. Before you're completely finished, make sure that you check the back of your head with a mirror, as to avoid these little guys. They are the ends of braids and sometimes they will stick out like so and they look pretty ridiculous. So uh, we're going to pin that away. Did I just remember to turn on the lights and put my little squirrels over there as I was doing the bun? Yes, I did. Is it very professional? Not really. But then again, this is them YouTubes. Now the thing with vortex buns is that they will very easily become slanted if you don't take very good care of the positioning of the ponytail and also the direction in which you start laying out those half circles. But as you may have noticed, I did not stress in any sort of way that you should center it or pay attention to the positioning because we're going to embrace the asymmetry. So how will we do that? With decoration. I, for one, need my sparkles when it comes to fabulous New Year's Eve hairstyles. So I'm going to start placing these rhinestone U-pins in the side of my bun, the one that is sort of closer to my forehead. Just eyeballing it sort of an equal distance apart from each other. That should do. And now, to balance out the slantedness, we need something on this side with more volume and texture. I don't know, something like... Clip-in flowers! And to all of you naysayers who say that uh, flowers may not be a very seasonal thing to put on your head on December the 31st, I say it's always spring in my heart. So I'm just going to start clipping them into this other general area. Ta-da! I'm also going to add these two vintage celluloid hair combs. Oh, I just love how it looks! So let's see what sort of dress this would go with. Now that we have the pretty dress going on, we need some jewelry. This necklace I got from a flea market in Germany. This pair of earrings is also from a flea market, but in Hungary. And yes, I know one of the stones is missing, but to be honest, because of the striking design, nobody ever noticed it on me. This bracelet you've seen before on my channel and some of you asked about it actually. It's a piece of Japoniserie. I probably butchered that, I'm sorry. Anyway, it's a piece of jewelry from around the turn of the century, maybe 1910s, when oriental inspired jewels were in vogue and a lot of these beauties were imported to Europe from Asian countries. I know that there are some ethical questions about it, but this one is a very old piece of jewelry. It's one of the very few things that I ever bought from an actual antique store, but this one I just it really struck a heart string for me. I felt an instant connection and the shopkeeper told me that it's actually from the belongings of a Hungarian piano artist, Zdenko Tihoric. So it's no wonder that a piece of jewelry with such a rich history is definitely one of my favorites when I want to doll myself up. And with that, I am ready to embrace 2021 and all the pretty, new, magical and wonderful things that it's going to bring us. Hope that doesn't jinx it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, do leave it a like. Do subscribe to my channel because I post videos every week now. And they're kind of fun. They're sometimes about hair. They're sometimes about history. They're sometimes about folklore. And sometimes it's a mishmash of all of them. So do subscribe if you enjoy a combination of any of those things. 
as for the hairstyle, as you can see, it's very easy to do. It's very hard to mess up because you don't even have to pay attention to the symmetry. It's very easy to spice up with any sort of hair accessory that you may have in your wardrobe. Or if you're one of those minimalist gals, then you can leave it as is and just go for the beautiful petal texture hair flower look. And to be honest, the most time-consuming part of it is just creating the rope braids. So it's a pretty quick hairstyle as well. It creates an intriguingly detailed look. At least a handful of people are going to assume that you went to a hairdresser to get your hair done. Either that or that you spent an excruciatingly long amount of time to get it done yourself. If you decide to try this hairstyle yourself and you post it on Instagram, do tag me because I love seeing how you try out these hairstyles, partially because I I just really enjoy seeing my hairstyles done on different hair colors and hair textures and partially because if you try it out it means that I've managed to give you something relatable and useful. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I wish you all a very happy new year and see you in 2021! Bye bye! <laughs>